Hi, and welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. My name is Ford from Son of a Stitch, and last week in the comments of my video, a viewer asked a question about how to handle backstitch. And so I decided I would just make a video sharing all of my backstitch tips, and it quickly became apparent that I had too much content for just one video. So welcome to part one of a two-part series that I'm going to call Baby Gut Backstitch. Here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we are all about cross stitch, and we upload helpful and, with any luck, entertaining videos about it every single week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our wonderful videos. And if you like this video in particular, make sure to hit the little thumbs up icon and leave me a comment down below. Likewise, if you have a question you'd like me to answer on the channel, put that in the comments and I'll add it to my list of future video ideas. Now backstitch is kind of divisive within the cross-stitch community. A lot of people don't enjoy doing it, but you can't argue with the results. It makes a pattern look so much cleaner and more finished when you use it, so when the pattern calls for backstitch, you do the damn backstitch. But I'm going to teach you a few of the things that I do that make backstitching a little more enjoyable and a little less painful of a process for me. But before I go too much further, I want to remind you to join the Caterpillar Cross-Stitch VIP Stitch Club. When you first join, you'll get 10% off your first order, you'll get an ebook with eight free PDF cross stitch patterns in it, and you'll get a digital download of our top 10 cross stitching tips. So hit the link down there in the description so you can get all of those great perks. Now, the first thing I want to teach you is a little bit about, about terminology. If you don't know, the reason it's called backstitch is because the stitch on the surface of the fabric is always going back relative the to the direction of travel of the line. Now this leads to very consistent and even tension and directionality of the stitches and a very sturdy stitch, but it does use more floss than some other methods of doing a straight line stitch. Because since you're always covering double the distance that you intend to move on the bottom and then the distance you intend to move on the top, it uses three times as much floss as the length of the line that you wind up creating. So. I'll show you how that's done and then a slightly different method of doing it that uses a little bit less floss and can help you go a little bit faster. So let's take a look. Here you can see me doing a true backstitch. Um, as you'll notice that while the line is progressing from the left to the right side of the fabric, each individual stitch while on the surface of the fabric goes from right to left. So that's what makes it a backstitch is that each stitch is going backwards compared to the direction of travel. Now, if you find an old copy of Better Homes and Gardens or some other cross-stitch tutorial, it's going to tell you that backstitch should be done one square at a time in the way that I'm doing here. And that is very consistent and it gives a particular look. You can see here that it, instead of a long straight line, I get sort of a more staccato series of dashes here. Um, so if that's a look that works for your project, then that's ideal, but I'm going to show you a couple of other slightly different ways of doing it. Now one of the parts of doing backstitch that a lot of people find troublesome is doing backstitch when the line is out away from full stitches and you have nothing solid to anchor it to. So let me show you a couple of techniques to make that a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do here is kind of a modified loop start for backstitch. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to load my needle with one strand of floss. Backstitch should always be one strand unless the pattern specifies otherwise. And I'm going to pull about half of that strand through the fabric at about the middle point of the area that I want to backstitch. I'm going to keep the other half up here on top. And then I'll come back up a few squares away and then go back down through in the same original point, making one stitch. And that is enough friction that that will hold that floss there while I work with it. And I'm going to take one of these strands and I'm going to move it out of the way. I'll put it up on my needle minder or on the edge of the hoop. And then with the other strand, the one that's still got the needle on it, I will just start backstitching. Now you'll notice I'm stitching a few squares at a time here, which is the way I usually prefer to do it. I just feel like it looks a little bit better and um, gives me a straighter line. But if you go too long, then the lines won't lay flat and won't be straight. So for me personally, that ideal length is somewhere around three to four stitches. I generally don't want my backstitch lines to be any longer than that. So that's generally about how far I'll travel. 
three or four squares of fabric in a single stitch. And you can see that that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing three at a time. And then I can just go off in one direction with the floss. And then once I finish with that strand, I'll go back to the piece of floss that I've got holding in reserve from when I started. And I'll go off in the other direction. That's why I want to start in roughly the middle of the area that I'm going to be back stitching. So I'm going to show you something that's a little bit more like a traditional loop start here. As with a usual loop start, I load two ends of a single piece of floss through the needle, leaving a loop on the end. Then normally you kind of bind that loop around a little bit of the fabric, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tuck my needle under a single stitch on the back of the fabric, and then I'm going to stick my needle through that loop. It's called a bite in knot making, and cinch that down around the back side of that stitch. So then I'm going to bring my needle up to the front, of course, my needle miter's in the way, so I gotta <laughs> move it here and then get it back in focus. But I'm gonna bring that back around to the front, and then I will have two strands of the floss that I'm gonna use to backstitch on the front. Now, as before, you wanna do this somewhere close to the middle of the area that you're gonna be backstitching. Pull those apart, wrap one of those strands around your needle minder or around the uh, tension screw of your hoop, something like that, to get it out of the way. And then just take one of those strands, go off backstitching in one direction, and then after you've completed that one, take the other strand that you've been holding in reserve and go off backstitching in another direction with that one. This last technique requires a little bit of foresight because you will have needed to save a couple of stitches, of full stitches in the particular color that you're going to be backstitching. So if you're going to be doing backstitches and full stitches in a particular color, you can just leave a couple of the full stitches undone. And then when you go to do the back stitch, you do that last full stitch of color, and then you use the same technique. You bring the needle up to the surface with both strands through it. You separate them. You pull one off to the side and reserve that for later. You go off stitching in one direction with one of those strands, and then after you've ended it, you go back stitching, back stitching in the other direction with the other strand. So this allows you to have half as many thread ends to bury um, because you don't have to start your thread, you only have to end. A lot of times when backstitch is used to add detail or granularity to a project, the backstitch line will not necessarily follow the direction of the grid. And so it can be a little bit confusing to figure out where to actually put your needle through the fabric. So I'm going to show you the technique that I use to figure out when I should actually take the stitch down through the fabric and make another stitch. So when the back stitch line is vertical or horizontal or runs at a 45 degree angle relative to the weave of the fabric, it's really easy to tell where you can put the needle through without messing up the line. It'd be every square, anywhere you want, basically. Now, personally, that tends to be about four stitches long, as I mentioned. For me, that's the optimal length to maintain the integrity of the line without the floss being too loose. So that's about what I stick to. Um, but what do you do when the line so do do is not at one of those the angles, like, like these ones here? These have a How more uh, unusual slope. Fabric. So I'm going to teach you the technique I use for figuring that out. And remember when in geometry class they taught you how to calculate the slope of a line? Basically, its rise over its run. How much of a change in vertical position versus how much of a change in horizontal position. So vertical over horizontal is how that was notated standardly. So what we're going to do is we're going to count how far up this line goes and then how far across this line goes. So if we count up, or if we count across, sorry, we get four. It changes horizontal position by four. And then it changes vertical position by eight. So the slope of this particular line is going to be eight over four. So if we write that down, we can reduce that fraction to be 2 over 1, not 2, 1. <laughs> and so that tells us that we can, that our line of floss will cross a natural hole in the fabric for every 2 vertical and 1 horizontal square. So it's going to cross a hole in the fabric here, and here, and here. Those are the places that we would want to put our needle through the fabric because we won't have to pierce the fabric and it will be in a natural position. Now with this line over here, if we do the same thing, we count how far across it goes. It's a horizontal movement 
of 9. And then we count how far up it goes. It's a vertical movement of 6. So if we reduce that fraction as well, then we get a slope of 2 over 3. So the thread line will cross a natural hole in the fabric every two vertical stitches and every three horizontal stitches. So the positions where we can very easily put our needle through the fabric are at this spot, that's up two over three, at this spot, that's up two over three. So those are the places where we'll want to do it. We can use the exact same thing to calculate this one over here. Um, if the fraction is irreducible, if we can't make it any smaller, then we're going to have to just punch through. And so using a sharp needle can be very handy in that circumstance. So that'll cover it for the basic backstitch hacks that I wanted to share with you this week. Next week, I'm going to go into some more advanced techniques for making backstitching look good on more difficult and complex projects. So make sure you tune in for that. I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For Caterpillar Cross Stitch, my name is Ford, and I will see you next week. Hi, have you heard about Love It Stitch It yet? You can design and shop the cross stitch patterns you've always wanted. Love It Stitch It is an easy to use design tool and exclusive cross stitch marketplace, giving you the freedom to create, sell, and shop all in one place. You can design anything that you like and text, upload and convert pictures and artwork. You can design the cross stitch patterns of your dream. You can download them for personal use or you can upload them onto the marketplace designed by cross stitchers for cross stitchers jam-packed with some gorgeous cross stitch patterns from designers all over the world if you're not interested in designing or selling that's totally fine too just visit the marketplace and you can shop from hundreds of beautiful cross stitch patterns so you can pick your next project are you already a cross stitch designer but maybe you're fed up of other marketplaces maybe not getting the sales that you deserve, maybe not getting your patterns seen as much as you'd like, then let us help. You can easily register for free and get uploading your PDF patterns with absolutely no fees whatsoever. Let us then market your gorgeous designs that you've put all of your work into to over 185,000 dedicated cross stitchers from all over the world. We will absolutely do our best to get your patterns seen and into the right hands of people that we know will absolutely love stitching them. As a designer, you can easily list your PDF patterns for sale, no matter which software you use to design them. Our job is to make cross-stitch design accessible to all. There's nothing to upgrade, there's nothing to download. It's really easy to use and beginner friendly. We also wanted to create the marketplace to bring sellers and buyers together so that it's really easy and such an enjoyable experience to shop all of the high quality verified designs on the platform, but also to give those amazing designers a place to really showcase their creativity. So visit loveitstitchit.com today and register for free. Stitch what you love and free your creativity. Mm -hmm.